Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit welcome of you, beautiful people, today's service, miracle service, or service of miracle. We are the miracle worker. Jesus is hallelujah. You just know how to connect with him, flow with him, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. We just um, welcome all of you today to World Make Christ Ministries. Amen. We just thank God for all of you that are here and all those are in the listening, viewing audience for tuning in today to the um, Holy Spirit Fire TV. We just thank you for um, honoring the Lord by coming to his house today. We just give God all the praise. My husband, uh, Dr. Anthony Bright, myself, Dr. Therese Bright, he's the founder, um, pastor. I'm the co-founder and pastor of World Make Christ Ministries. We just welcome all of you. Amen. And get your Bible. We're going to feed on the word. Amen. Here we don't here we don't get milk here. We get meat. Amen. 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 And meat comes from death to self. Amen. That's what we get. Oh yes. Jesus. Because it's not death to self, the soul. This one come and read this poem. This one come and say this. All is structured. Oh, this one come and say this, this one. It's not speed led. After all that, anybody edify? Zero. Okay, God. Because it's left by the flesh, by the, by the flesh, hallelujah, praise the living God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we'll use the scripture in First Corinthians chapter 14. So oh, when we come to God, let this, let this one have psalm, this one have prophecy, this one da, da, da. They use that as scripture. But that scripture has to be manifested when the spirit quickens. See that? And they take they the context. See? And so we come together. And they will say, this one say, uh, I have a son, this one says, say, the thing has to spirit led. John chapter 6, 63 says, it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh what? Profited nothing. Those who are walking the flesh, the profit what? Zero. Flesh always bring what? Con. Bondage, corruption, <laughs> and you profit nothing. It's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profited nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit and they are, they are alive. That's Jesus' own word, hallelujah. Jesus is left by the spirit, everything he did. Even though when he drove people away from the, uh, from the temple, hallelujah. Everything he did, he said, spirit, but he was left by the spirit, hallelujah. Because he was chasing the father, they chasing the father. Chasing the father. So today's teaching, hallelujah, we're starting now, hallelujah, is what? Chasing How to pursue. Say pursuing. How to pursue. pursue. Pursuing, pursuing the manifested presence, the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. Oh, we know He doesn't chase us; we chase Him. Amen. Oh yes. Amen. Thank you. How many people did Jesus tell when they were about to go to when He was going at, going to heaven in, in, in First Corinthians chapter fifteen? Five hundred people were witness His ascension, and He told them, "Go to the upper room." How many went? 120. <laughs> okay. Or for 380. They are not pursuing the presence of the Lord. They are not pursuing it. They had it, but they don't follow through. Mm -hmm. We have the same thing today in the body of Christ. But some are just lukewarm, wishy washy, just low level, and all those things. They are not hungry and thirsty for His manifested presence. Say manifested presence. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's come to Luke 24. Then we are pursuing his presence, you'll be changed. Say change. Change. From glory. You know, you know you will not be the same person anymore. Hallelujah. You are changed from glory to glory. Or you are pursuing him. Amen. You're not pursuing ministry. There's so many out there pursuing ministry, 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 ministry. Then we, you, you see that the ministry, nothing's happening because full of self. Amen. And no one's changed. Oh yes. Amen. Don't be hoping, don't get self and no one. Else. Anybody be healed? Anybody be delivered? Anybody be saved? Nothing. Self. Glorification. Self. Attention to themselves. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Consequently, people come there and go back west. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. But people are led by the Spirit. That's why um, people's needs are, are never met. Because yes. it's the anointing. It's, it's because it's, the Lord said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord hosts. And because it's by the Spirit that if, if the pastors and those that are over the service aren't in tune with the Holy Spirit, then his, what he wants done in that service will not manifest because they're being led by the flesh. And the Holy Spirit, they don't give him a place to operate. 
and they compromise or just say, um, there's even places that do preach other people's sermons. <laughs> and when they, if they preach other people's sermons and it's not led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit never told them to teach that, then no one's going to be edified. They're just hearing, but it's um, when, when people go home and they start facing challenges and the enemy starts coming in to, you know, come against them, they have no word to stand on, no promise to stand on that they might have received in, a, in an anointed service to help them get through that challenge. They have no teaching that was led by the Holy Spirit to help them be overcomers. And that's why we teach and train people here how to be overcome and be led by this Holy Spirit in everything that you do. And um, it's and it's not difficult because you you just humble yourself to call on Him, and He's there to help you. If you're if you want if you want help, He will help you. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Once you, when you get to know Him more, He will help you in your everyday life and overcome the challenges that you face and help you put crucify your flesh and overcome sin problems and other things, situations that have operated in people's lives. Amen. Amen. Oh, Thank you, Lord Jesus. And when you know how to stay flow in the spirit, and you have break. You can minister anywhere. Brother, will lead you and guide you. But if you are not taught how to flow in the spirit, and you have to pursue the presence of the Lord, you do everything, you flesh in his ear, and then you say, Lord, come and bless us. Why should God come and bless something you choose, not him? <laughs> you can't boss only goes around. Oh, yes, you can tell me. <laughs> Yeah, show sure. up. Yeah, show sure. up. I didn't send you there. You say yourself. You fix it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. When we follow our own plan, when we follow our own plan for our life, there's no anointing. When we follow God's plan for our life, then there's the anointing and you're going to fulfill your destiny. So you stay on course and you follow His plan for your life. Bye. And it's denying yourself every day to go His way. Say, help me put my will on the cross because you have a free will. So you can choose to either serve flesh and the devil or you choose to serve God and the, and walk with the Holy Spirit and have a victorious life, a, a blessed, prosperous, fulfilled life. And that's what we, um, that's offering in my husband and I's life and we want to share that with other people to help them Amen. have this, God's no respect of person, he can do what he does for us, he can do the same thing. And that's why we um, meet people in the community on a day-to-day -day basis, and Lord, whatever the Lord tells us to share with them or pray for them or say something for them, or we see them and they have a need, go home and pray for them. Whatever the Lord tells us, that's what we do on a regular basis to, to help people, because we want to see everybody make it to heaven. And no one left behind, no one, you know, um, not be able to uh, fulfill their destiny because God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us and that's how we help people you know, stay on track to help them fulfill the destiny to do what God has called them to do on the, on the earth. Praise God. It is so true. It's so simple. Thank you, Lord. When you chase God, whatever he has, he will manifest to you. We are chasing stuff, chasing this, chasing that, chasing ministry, ministry, ministry. It's not there. You have to fulfill your own plan. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know when you get it, you don't know how to do it. It's anointing. Thank you, because you don't know how to cooperate. Anointing is a person. See, we cannot follow him without without we self deny. Say self deny. Self deny. It takes self deny, hallelujah, to follow the presence of the Lord. Oh yes. Because your own self wants to do other things opposing <laughs> the will and the way and the time of the Holy Spirit. Say self be quiet. Thank you, Jesus. I go God's way, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And people themselves, they are very egotistical. They are always trying to show off, trying to impress people how spiritual they are, and try to give prophesy force. <laughs> oh, yes. They prophesy force and tell people, that said the Lord, and it's not, it's not God itself. You see? And so many are hanging on those kind of false prophecy for years, and that is fulfilled because it's not of God. Yes. What God has not started, He can finish it. <laughs> That's my father, Baka. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And they all have all kind of prayer groups, prayer group, 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 and they, they all come and say, this one say, oh, that's it, the Lord. They all say, and who is there to supervise? Who is there to test the prophet's going? Nobody. Anything goes. 
Thank you, Jesus. And they will try to force themselves to keep the uh, prophecy fulfilled. You cannot fulfill anything God has not offered. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. See, that is why this last day we're going to see all kind of stuff going out in the body of Christ, hallelujah, all in the name of Christianity. Thank you, Jesus. And you have to be wise and discerning yes. and know which is God, which is not. I'll pick on uh, Nancy. Before Nancy came here, Holy Ghost showed us that she checked on us by the Holy Spirit before she came. <laughs> you check on us the first time you came here when you, you heard about us. You pray about us before you came. Yeah. To know if we were real or not. Oh. So that's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing. That's a good thing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a good thing. Yeah. And we respect yeah. that. Yes. We, we respect yeah. that. Because yeah. that's what people should do before they go anywhere. Yeah. Say, Lord, is this are these people really of you? <laughs> you know, is this ministry born of you or is it born of the flesh? Yeah. You know, because if you're if you go to a ministry that's born of the flesh, mm. I, I mean you can catch a wrong spirit and have to fight off that wrong spirit. <laughs> you know, if the Holy Spirit doesn't lead you there. So it's so important to be to pray about everything. Because we encourage people. So that's why we're complimenting you for praying about uh, where you came. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That's supposed to be hallelujah. Okay, Luke twenty four. Uh, we're going to start from verse 44. Luke 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, the law of Moses. Okay, those are the five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So everything in the book of Moses is talk about Jesus symbolically. Mm -hmm. Any book, hallelujah, you say we you also see it in the prophets. The, the prophets are Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and all and all. Those are prophets. Everything written there is talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even though they didn't mention the name of Jesus, all symbolic of Jesus. Then Psalms, the book of Psalms. They all talk about Jesus. Psalm 22 talk about, his, about Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So we see how this all has been has been spoken or written about Jesus. But when Jesus came, his own people did not receive him. They didn't chase him. Yes. So we know him. We know his brother. We know his sister. We know his mother. Are they not the first today? Where did he come from? They are judging by the flesh. For they are the, those people are the flesh, they cannot discern who Jesus was. So that, that's what people in those days missed the day of visitation. Yes. And that's so many people are doing to the same thing today. They are so caught up with their tradition, religion, legalism, and their own group and group and stuff, hallelujah. And when the God's moving somewhere, you don't want to go. But they say it's too far. <laughs> okay, caca. They have to travel miles to go and eat and feed their face. <laughs> okay, <laughs> They won't travel to come and feed their spirits. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So they're not pursuing the presence of the Lord. They're pursuing, they're pursuing their own belly. It's a belly. Verse Luke 24, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Go to pray. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Put your hand on your right. Open your my understanding. Open my understanding. Flash out. Flush out any sense knowledge, any sense knowledge, all human understanding, all, all human understanding, understanding, out of me, out of me. Give me the understanding. Give me the understanding of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, always, always. I welcome you. I welcome you. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, the knowledge, knowledge, understanding, understanding. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. Understand the scriptures. To understand the scriptures. Whenever I read it. Whenever I read it. Help me to, to discern. Help me to discern truth. Truth from life, from God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sharpen my gifts. Sharpen my gifts. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, Kakasha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, we need his understanding, Thank you, Jesus. not our understanding. That's why you open the understanding. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You understand what? Scriptures. Thank you, 
Jesus. We wrote that scripture, you can put your own interpretation. That's why you have so many meaning doctrine floating out there. <laughs> okay, Captain. See, because there are people, you have people who are saying things by the human opinion. We don't know human opinion. We need his understanding. Right. Right. Thank you, Jesus. How do you know the difference? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. It's his understanding that allows us to be the overcomer. Because uh, he shows us, you know, things that the enemy plan he shows. He gives us revelation to um, Jesus. to stand on. Thank you. You know, so that we know that his promises will be fulfilled in our lives. Because he opens up our understanding and understanding. So we can be able to better cooperate with the Holy Spirit when he's teaching us, when he's instructing us, when he's training us, when we have his understanding. Because if you don't understand it, it's hard to be able to cooperate with the Holy Spirit's leading. If you, when he opens up your understanding, he says, oh, okay, I see why he wants me to do that. And then you you um, understand it, so you cooperate with it. So that's why it's so important for us to understand the scripture so that we can cooperate with what the Lord's doing when we understand it. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of understanding. The more you're full of the Spirit of the Lord, the more He gives you revelation. Understand is knowing how and when to apply. The wisdom that the, the Word teaches. <laughs> if you don't have an understanding of it, you just be beating the air and don't try this, trying this, trying this, because and that's what people get confused. <laughs> you, know, you know, and God promises. Jesus said, You give him the study. The same thing, put you on Luke chapter 24. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. See? We need his understanding. I'm not here. You had dreams and vision. You call twelve different people. They give you twelve different interpretations. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> it's true. But they are giving their own opinion, their own understanding. And they learn. instead of what, if the twelve people are the Spirit and correct the Holy Ghost, they will say the same thing. Yes. Yeah. They all say different repetitions. <laughs> okay, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Second like Timothy chapter two, verse seven. Consider what I say, the Lord give thee understanding in all things. The Lord what? Give thee understanding, understanding in all, in all things. things. Not some things. Hello. But we have to ask. Understanding. You understanding here enable what? To pursue his manifested presence. Amen. To know how, hey, that you know what he lets the Holy Spirit from manifest. That's right. See, you're able to. Uh, Get rid of this, hallelujah, you understand what he wants. Thank you, Lord God, that's God required from you. If you understand of it, you're able to submit and yield and surrender. But if you don't have understanding, you are full. You are confused with tradition, religion, brainwash, all kind of legalism. Amen. You think, it's, it's, you, have to, you have to be certain way. No, go for the God different, different ways. The understanding reveal his ways. Say ways. His ways. His will reveal his knowledge. Say knowledge. Knowledge. His timing reveal what? His wisdom. His wisdom. Amen. Amen. Yes. You have to know his will. His way. His timing. His will. That's revelation knowledge. His way. That's understanding. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And his timing is his wisdom. You know when to appropriate apply the, apply the scripture. You know what time. When to say. When to speak. When to go. When not to say anything. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Because you are walking in that. That's how you are following his work. His priorities. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Before God bless and we God make you wiser than your enemies. And um, Second Timothy, in the cha chapter two, verse twenty-three says, "But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife." Hmm. See, when people don't have the understanding, then they ask foolish and unlearned questions, things that um, cause people to get into arguments, and they don't. So we don't want you don't want the word to try, cause you to get an argument when you don't understand it. So that's why it's so important to have the understanding so you avoid foolish questions and things that cause people to get in arguments. Thank you, Jesus. And verse twenty four says, Second Timothy two twenty four, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, means not do it try to, to do understand it in their own strength. It says, But he but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. So we don't, striving causes people to be led by their own flesh and to be presumptuous. And that's why we, we, don't, we want to avoid being presumptuous. We want to be led by the Spirit and pursue Him, pursue His presence. And so we're able to teach and be patient with people that don't have the understanding. So we can teach them the right, the good, the right way, 
to open up their understanding. It's like when you witness to somebody to be saved, mm -hmm. you say, um, are you born again? You say, well, what does born again mean? So are you saved? What Saved from what? <laughs> they have no understanding. They, have, they don't understand the terms. So you have to use wisdom and say, well, and say, do you know Jesus? Well, and they say, I, I know him. They may have just heard his, Jesus, the name Jesus. And they say they know him. And then you go a step further and say, well, how do you know Jesus? Um, and then, you know, they'll proceed to explain. So you know whether or not they're really born again. And to be able to witness to them. So the, just those are some of the simple things that you might face. But see, if people don't understand what you're saying to them, then they, um, they don't know what answer to give or they don't know how to, how to answer you at all because they don't understand. So you have to use wisdom and open up the word to people and be able to teach and be patient with them because they don't understand. It's a, the enemy puts a, a blinds them from knowing the truth. Just as the uh, Pharisees and the Jews were blinded from knowing that Jesus, their Messiah, had come, and they missed the visitation. As my husband was saying earlier, they missed the visitation because the devil I mean, blinded them from knowing that, that they didn't know the will, the way, or the timing. That that was their the timing that Jesus came. That was a, their day of visitation. So that's why it's so important when you're seeking the Lord, following His presence, that you know His will, His way, and His timing, and have the understanding how to cooperate with Him. Amen. And Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-five says, "In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves." Mm -hmm. What does that mean? See, you just tell the truth. Don't get, don't let anybody get get you to argument or certain doctrine. Amen. You know, it's not just, it's not, yes. <laughs> um, the other day I was, we were going somewhere and then I then went to Mansbach and I met this Muslim, I started witnessing to him, wow. he said, who made this, who made this, who made this, trying to get the confession, he said, brother, Jesus loves you, I want to accept him, ask him to forgive you, say, come to your heart, he said, I'm Muslim, I said, doesn't matter, he wants to reveal himself to you, then he started trying to get into confession, argue, what do I do? Just ease myself out. Amen. And later on, when I left, I started praying for him that the Holy Spirit will reveal himself to him. Amen. And remove the veil. Because it's no, it's no good arguing, the content. Never argue with a Muslim or other religious people. Never, Amen. never, never. You waste your time and everything. Amen. Okay. Just pray that the veil be removed from your heart. That's why the example in meekness or struggling those that oppose themselves. If God pray, 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 pray adventure will give them what? Repentance to the knowledge of what? Or the truth, truth, you see, and that they may recover, say recover, recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. How did the devil come through contention and strife? What is James says through strife and contention, there's confusion, what and every evil word. Never let anyone get into strife and contention, Amen. that you'll be captured. That's said, but <laughs> by the snare of the enemy. Yes. Hello. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are doing fine until you meet until you, until you meet until you meet them. It's like a dry argument. The other day was some uh, some people who are who are who baptized in the name of Jesus only uh, called. They want to this guy want to be uh, get into contention about the doctrine. What name you baptize him? What difference does it make? You baptize the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what we do here. Say so because you don't baptize the name of Jesus only, they, they thought. We are wrong. <laughs> you see? You see, she want to, this want to get into contention. I just ease myself. I say, thank you for sharing. Blah, blah, blah. You see? Because I don't want to be captured. Say, captured. Captured. You get to argument and strike people. You be captured by, by the enemy. Yes. That we say here. Yes. See? Yes. I say, at his own will. That's the devil has a free day. You see? That's right. That's why and you guard yourself against that. You, you, you start. You see that that's where it's going. Mm. And then you just pull back and ease out. <laughs> See? Ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom what to say next so that you don't, you know, get into the argument now. And that's not me. You're a weak Christian. You don't have anything to say. You have a lot to say. You're wise. Amen. You're wise and your enemy. But that's right. See, that person don't answer a fool according to the multitude of foolishness. I was in the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. See? You just be quiet, hallelujah, and ease yourself out, hallelujah, and praise the living God. Mm -hmm. Even though you have a thought or thing to say, don't, you know, when you say things, you start getting into a word exchange. You see, now let me move in. And when you're already free before, now you are captured. Say captured. Yeah. Yeah. The devil. <laughs> to get the argument, people have your contention, hallelujah, praise. Oh, we say here. Yeah. See? 
that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken, taken captive by him at what? Amen. At his will. Amen. See, these are people give place to the devil. They are no more pursuing the Holy Spirit, they are pursuing the enemy. Through our disagreement, contention, all from those who yes. Hallelujah. Praise him. Never argue. Never argue with God. Let's preach himself, defend himself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We are going to have, see, everyone is different, different level in their Christian world. <laughs> You say, Fana, you tell the TV home, see, you, you listen to this preacher, this one comes to contradict the other one, that's one contradict this one. <laughs> this one comes to contradict and then before you don't know how to believe. You never get to be okay. That. But that is why you have to be led more program you watch. What you listen to. Because they're all at different levels of understanding. Yeah. They may this one may have a revelation that another one may not have. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. So another person shouldn't say that they're wrong just because they don't have that same revelation, that same understanding that the other person had. And that's why we have to discern um, who is speaking, who is speaking through that person. Is it led by the, is it teaching by the Holy Spirit, or is it in self or their opinion, so that they don't throw you off, you know? Yeah. You also defy your spirit because words defy. Say word. Words. words. They defy. Defy. That's what Jesus said in John 15, verse 3. The word I speak to you, they're cleansed. You are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. See? You don't only cleansed by the word, you are cleansed by the spirit, you are cleansed by the blood. So it's going to arguments and to argue with people, containing all kinds of those before you realize your spirit contaminated. You grieve, you vex. See, because you give to the enemy and you are captured by the word snare of the enemy. Now he said, yeah. You see, if Jesus, um, when he spoke, says, my words are, his, I give you life and life more abundantly, because the word that he spoke to the people, it, it destroyed the wrong thinking that they were going through. It destroyed the religion and tradition um, because they were still following just only the law, only the law in the Old Testament. They didn't, they weren't uh, walking in the whole truth because Jesus came to liberate them from the, tr the tradition was keeping them bound from uh, being able to do, do different things because um, they wouldn't pray for anybody on the Sabbath. Mm. You see, Jesus was led to pray for certain people on the Sabbath day because their religious tradition, they said, well, they took it so far so that no one, would, they, they thought they were wrong, they were in sin if they would pray for anybody on the Sabbath day. So, to destroy the wrong thinking, so gee, the words I give you are life, life more abundantly. So, that's why when Jesus spoke his word, that's why it destroyed the snare, destroyed the plan, and, and to bring people out of captivity. And that's why when you read the word, that's why it destroys your, the wrong thinking. When, the Lord, when you read the word of God, it opens up your understanding. Especially what Jesus spoke in the New Testament, when the gospel, the four gospels, that the anointing destroys the yoke, the wrong thinking. When you have the, the right understanding, and when you read it, and if you even read it out loud, it helps. It helps you because you not only um, are getting in your spirit by your eyes, you're also hearing it, hearing and seeing, which is like a getting more of the anointing when you, if you read it out loud. That's why when you come to church on Sunday or when there's services or reading the word, it plows your heart, it opens up your understanding when the word goes <coughs> forth because the anointing is on the word. When the, so the word goes forth, it opens up people's understanding, it plows their heart, and they can more open to receive what God has for them in the service. Man, that's so true. What she's saying is confirmed here in Ephesians chapter Jesus. 1. Ephesians chapter 1. This is 17, 18. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom it's and revelation. Yeah. 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 But God is given to you and I the spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And we are to receive. Say receive. Receive. Okay, that's our responsibility. <laughs> okay. We want to read that again. See, God, we can be giving something to you, but you say, oh, child, that's not for me. I'm not good enough. That's for somebody else. Then you don't, it's not yours. But you don't receive. See, when you receive, you believe. <laughs> that's, that's right. Amen. That's right. See, when there's unbelief, there's no receptivity. 
See, that's why you have to open your spirit wide. See? So God will minister to you today. I can't have that manger. I hope the spirit of truth. He will give it to you. You have to receive. But it's not going to push on you. That's right. See? Okay. See? I receive by what? Dying to my own will, my plan, my will. Amen. That's how I receive. Anytime you receive anything from the Lord, you die. To your to yourself. To yourself. To your will, to your flesh. See? And that when people don't want to die, then they can receive. They still pump and pump out their flesh and all those things. And they want to hold on to the to, to the way they think to the way they understand it. Instead of opening themselves up to the truth and how God showed them to give to instead of accepting God's understanding of the word, they want to stay and stay on their own understanding. So that means that if they're not open, then the Spirit of the Lord can't really minister to that person. Because they want to hold on to the way they think about it, which is pride. Instead of opening and receiving, humbling themselves and receiving the truth, the way the um, Holy Spirit is, is teaching it. See, and what in Proverbs chapter 3 says, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct your path. Why is it direct our path? Because we are pursuing him. We are not leaning on no our understanding. Amen. Leaning on our opinion. Leaning on presumptuousness. Leaning on our own self and leaning on stuff. Hallelujah. But leaning on him and his understanding. See? That's a choice we make. And no one can force you to lean on his understanding. You have to make the choice. It's a personal thing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See? If you shall know the truth, the truth you know shall set you up. Free. Free. For your own understanding, for your own opinion, or somebody's opinion. Okay, I finish chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. See, the spirit of wisdom and what? Revelation. revelation. It is a sense knowledge. Sense knowledge is what? Human understanding. Mm -hmm. Presumptuously. Amen. We don't want that. We want His revelation. That's right. And you know that revelation knowledge is coming from the Holy Spirit. You're still bear witness. See, you'll be fed. You feel you'll be pumped inside. You say, oh, Amanda, thank you, Jesus. You witness that. In your spirit. Yeah, in your spirit. That somebody's opinion, somebody's uh, presumptuousness, somebody's philosophy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, you feel we, excited. About it. That's what my husband's trying to say. You feel excited in your spirit about what you hear. You know, when someone's teaching something, you just feel blah. Mm. Like the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I call it uh, in the in the medical field. It's like a flat line. If someone if someone uh, they can't get a heartbeat, so, well, the person just flat lined. <laughs> Your spirit will be just like flat, dull. You won't you won't feel excited about it. But when the truth is going forward and it's uh, taught by this Holy Spirit, you'll feel excited about it. And that's the uh, that's a that's a sign to you to know that that's part of being able to discern because you may not hear an audible voice the Holy Spirit saying that's me you may you know just in your he'll deal with you in your spirit you know about it just you know quietly Thank you. and there are two types of teaching sense knowledge and revelation knowledge sense knowledge is more it. <laughs> that's right see we can't blah before that knows that. You have found before you before hear that teaching, by the time you are down, you are depressed, you are suppressed. But it's not born of that. It's not born of the spirit. <laughs> it's a revelation only that feed us, feed our spirit. Amen? So let's read it again. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, talking about the gift Christian, the spirit of wisdom, that's the Holy Spirit, and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Anytime you get, you receive the spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, you know him intimately for yourself. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. That's how you grow in the law. Sense knowledge teaching never causes anybody to grow. You still suck your thumb. 50 years, 60 years. Okay? Why? Because you're not sitting under revelation only teaching, which will transform you, who can inspire you, who will change you, hallelujah, praise you, and cause you to flourish and blossom. He said, you always be at the baby level. Baby level. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he's the second time. You always be at the baby level instead of growing, you know, maturing like. Because there's levels in the spirit. You know, from baby Christian to like a toddler Christian. Just as in the natural, you know, like a, a young adult. 
to a teenager, to an adult, to a mature adult. You know, this yeah, that's yes, how yes. be a senior in the spirit. That's right. that's a person that really knows and understands the word and can teach other people understanding of the word. The, the way we know the, we, we we knew a lady. She was born 1908. 1908. Three years later, she said she became born again Christian. Probably it's 1912, 1911. You see? But if you see her life, you can no fruit. She's full of self, selfish, self centeredness. Mm. Hello. This woman was born before we were born. Before my mother was born. <laughs> and you say she's a Christian. In her 70s and 80s. And it's 90s. Now, yes. thank you, Jesus. You see, now it's that's how I say that. And we see that the other end, you can also, if you want to get today, hallelujah, praise the living God. If you're hungry and thirst for the Lord, you can grow quicker. Yes. If you are sitting under revelation, hallelujah. So, we, because we don't sit under revelation, only most of the time, that's why we don't grow fast. You got all kinds of stuff, all kinds of things, this one, uh, things of thought, hallelujah, which not of God, hallelujah. We believe it and sense knowledge, hallelujah, praise the living God. Then if we don't mature and grow, to mature means go show what you need to do, what his part and your part. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And your part is there to send the Holy to help you do your part too. That's just a big deal. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This lady is, was me as a snake. Was, oh, man. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> I still remember her today. She's not in this place. Thank you, Lord. You are used to live. Hallelujah. She said, we used to minister hard over. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So she's getting the teaching with her. Every week, she will sit down and teach. But she won't apply. See, Bible says, if you know this, happy are you? If you, if you do. do them, let's go do it. She said, she was the first, she will shout the loudest amen in the congregation. Yes, she will do that. That's the truth. She was born 1908. She was, uh, and she, she came to Christ in 1912. Thank you, Jesus. At the age of 12. So it's not what we hear, it's what we have to do and apply yes, to our lives yes. that brings us <laughs> the, um, the growth. Yes. We were able to grow when we apply the teaching and uh, so that the Lord can, the Holy Spirit can take you step by step to deep, deeper depths and higher heights of Him. That you get to know Him more. And the more you want to know him, that's why I say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. And you just keep seeking him. All the blessings, the prosperity, everything else will be added unto you because you're seeking him. Because when he opens up your understanding and you're wise, then that wisdom can uh, teach you how to operate with your finances, teach you how to talk with people on your job. It, it teaches you so many things when you have more of him and you teach you how to operate in this world so that you can dodge pitfalls and yeah. stay on top and know his way his ways are the best ways of doing things our own understanding this our own ways just don't cut it we need to know understand the ways of the lord so that we can operate in um in the wisdom but especially in proverbs when you read proverbs to give you more wisdom he opens your understanding to the proverbs to how to deal with people. Because in this life, you just have, you know how to know how to deal with people. You know how to know how to deal with the affairs of your household, with, you know, all different kinds of uh, areas. And the Holy Spirit will teach you, guide you. The more you know Him, then that's when other things just keep falling into place. And, and, and you live peaceably, you have joy, you have your needs met by knowing, by knowing Him and how to operate in His Word. Amen. That's so true. Psalm, um, Ephesians chapter 1, 17, 18 again, please. Okay. Ephesians 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Now, what's the result, the reward of after receive wisdom and knowledge? Then what? 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. See, that's the fruits. See, you receive the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. You receive the spirit of wisdom. And revelation and knowledge of him, knowledge of him how often? The eyes of your understanding. understanding are open. Yeah. What? Are open. <laughs> Enlightened. Yes. Amen. Yes. The veil is removed from your eyes. That's right. The veil is removed from your mind. The veil is removed from your heart. Yes. You have his understanding. Because you submit, you receive his wisdom. 
is revolutionary, then you understand it what enlightened, say enlightened. Enlightened. When they say darkened, say enlightened. Enlightened. It's eliminated. Thank you, Jesus. Then you are quick to pursue him. Then when he stops, you stop. When you move the right, you move the right. See? When you understand him, it's a trust. Then what? You become intimate. Say intimate. 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 You're so close with God. When people come around, they can feel nothing but God. When you follow Him, you are submerged in His manifested presence. Amen? Self is no more sin. Holy Ghost is sin. You become literally Jesus. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. They ask us to start That will be no. Say no. No. It is a guess. It is a presume. It is a assume. Let me know what is the hope of his calling. Amen. You also know your calling. You're not going to uh, try to do things God has told you to. <laughs> you, know, okay, God. you know the hope of a calling. You don't want to move and be quiet and in your praise the hope of his calling. What the riches of the glory of inheritance were? In the saints. In the saints. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes. See, you're always pursuing him. See? You're always practicing his presence. Talk it to him. I want to know you. I want to meet you. When he draws you, the one that says he draws me, he draws he draws me. then we are calling for hallelujah. When he draws you, son, son of Solomon chapter 1. Son of Solomon. Pursuing his manifested presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's start with this one, two, and three, and four. Some of some. You get the book of Ecclesiastes, just keep going. Chapter, Chapter one, yeah. Or you get the book of Proverbs, just keep going. You come to Ecclesiastes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Psalm of Solomon, chapter one, verse one, two, and three. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Verse 2, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for they, thy love is better than wine. Verse 3, because of the, of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. See the virgin. The virgins. The virgins talk about the game Christian. They love you. They obey you. The word virgin here, hallelujah, can be natural, can also be spiritual. Anytime we have come to Christ, our heart is circumcised. Amen. We are virgins. You know about five virgins? Five words virgin and foolish virgin. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That was a Christian relationship. Hallelujah. And verse 4 says, Draw me, we will run after thee. Yeah. Draw me what? We'll run we'll after thee. But you are already loving, it's easy to run after him. To love means it. the virgin love thee means the, the virgin are obedient. Say obedient. obedient. But the word love here means obey him. Willingly obey him. So when he draws you, to himself, you what? You pursue or you run after him. Yeah. See that? He's always drawing. Say he's always drawing. He's always, always drawing. drawing. But most of the time we get distracted. We let somebody <laughs> opinion, somebody's thing to pull us away from the will of God, from the ways of the time of God. We are lagged behind. Mm -hmm. say, instead of catching on with him, thank you, Lord Jesus, so we can renew him intimately. Hallelujah. Oh, Draw me. What? We will run after thee. We will run after thee. We will not run after the ministry. We will not run after stuff, car, home, all those things. Nothing is wrong with that. We will run after him. And then he will manage all those things. Yes, those things will be added to your life. Because he knows you have need of them. But you seek him first and all those other things should be added. Amen. And he says, um, he says, the king has brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. The what? The upright love the upright thee. Love thee, obey him. He says, we will be glad and rejoice in thee. He makes you glad because when you're when you're doing the right thing and you're walking uprightly, you have peace. Yes. So he, um, and you have joy that it says, the scripture says that no man can take from you because you know it was from God. God gives you that joy, that peace. Yes. Because um, people are in turmoil because they don't uh, they're confused. They don't know which way to turn. Because God will always set you on the right path. He'll always give you the. Um, you'll be steadfast when when you're following the Lord's leading, and you'll 
you'll know, it's like you know that you know that you're doing the right thing and you feel good about it when you know that you know that it's right. It says, we will remember thy love more than wine. And why does it say we remember thy love? Because the way the Lord loves you is different than, um, than just a, a person loving you. Because God's love is so much deeper than any person can ever give you. And that's why um, it says he, they, they will remember God's love. Yeah. Uh, true. John chapter 6. You see, he have a drawing. See, drawing. Drawing. See, God is always drawing. Because he wants a relationship, a fellowship more than anyone. Amen. So he made it. He created us. He puts his spirit within us. But he doesn't drag it. He draws. And we yield. Say yield. Yield. And yield. surrender to him. Amen. But follow up his instruction. Because he's Lord. If he's really Lord of our lives, then when he draws us, we are going to surrender. Because we're going to obey. We're going to obey the Lord. And so if we make him Lord of our lives, that means he is um, the head of our lives. And when he draws us, we're going to follow the, the, his leading because we are going to continue to um, honor him and, and walk under his authority. Okay. Amen. Uh, John 6, verse 32. 35. Okay, starting at the 35th verse. John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. When we, when we draw says, we are fed. We are well drunk. Drunk! Because in his presence, these are the manifestations. Amen. See? Okay. Verse 36, But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. See? He that comes to me, I what? And no wise cast, cast, cast out. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So how do you follow his manifest presence? By doing his will. Yeah. So doing his will. Doing his will. And walking his ways. Walking his ways. And moving his timing. Amen. Moving his timing. That's how we follow his manifest presence. Thank you, Jesus. That's what Jesus did. Amen. Verse 39. John 6, 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all of which he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I will raise him what? Up at the last, last, last day. day. Because we're all going to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Follow him. Amen. Verse 44. Verse 44, same 44. chapter. Yeah. John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I'll raise him up at the last day. You see that? Yes. He says it twice. So he says it twice. He's drawing. But, see? But you can kick, you can resist, you can quench, you can vex. He I'm not going. Okay? You just leave your own. Yeah. Yeah. Every good thing planned for you for that day will not manifest. Yes. For he fully loaded what? With his benefits. He's drawing you. He draw it. But quickly, but tell them our heart. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we just say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. See? Then when you follow him, the willingness, the willing of heart, and willing obedience, and the will, then you eat what? The best of the Lord. Amen. We are eating the best of the Lord and say, ha, 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 Satan, I bought it. See? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So it's not to keep me from receiving yes. God's best. No way. Thank you, Jesus. Right. That's right. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Very important point. You're not going to oppose me anymore because I'm going to be obedient and receive with all that God has yes. for me. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Receive what? His presence. Yes. 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 Verse 44. John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him. And I raise him up at the last day. See why you are able to raise up the last days? Yes. Yes. So we are... You want him walking his will, walking his way, walking his standing hand and you, you raise up, you don't have to raise yourself up, you do that. It's automatic. Thank you, Jesus. Don't lift the one. They make they make his obedient. Yes. Yeah. Humble. You can lift yourself. People are trying to lift themselves to be something they are not and they are up. They are cast down. Because man pride what? Bring them low. Mm -hmm. And then they go they, and they are punished. They got self exhortation. Verse forty five, John six forty five. It is written in the prophets. 
and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. See, come again. See, comes unto Jesus. See, how do we come to him? We know we are taught. See, it is written of the prophet that they shall be all taught. Say, all taught. All taught. All taught. So nobody is above teaching. <laughs> see, some, some say, I mean, I mean, see, they've been all taught of God. We're learning something new about the Lord every day. Yes. He always shows another part of himself mm. to you every day. It's like, um, so that you keep staying hungry because when he reels a little piece of himself, but you you want it. So oh, that's interesting. Yes. You know, you want to know keep knowing more of him. So as you keep seeking him, he keeps revealing more of himself to you, and that's what keeps you uh, excited about your relationship. And when he reveals things to you in his word, it shows you things. It's exciting to know more about him. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. That's a Matthew yes. 11, 20. He said, Jesus said, come out to me. All that heaven and earth, I give you what? Rest. Rest. Learn of me, for as meek and lowly in high shall be what? Rest in your soul. Thank when you Jesus. come to you, you follow his presence, you are pursuing him. There's always rest, joy, peace. Thank you, Lord. See? And no devil can run it. Because you're the king of our God, where there's righteousness, joy, and peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. John chapter 14, hallelujah. It's manifest. Yeah. Manifest. Whom does God manifest himself? And we are following him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we see how we can follow him. We thought that. Now, what, are the, what does God do when we follow him? Okay. Let's, John chapter 14, verse 15. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, so the love of God is what? Keep his commandments. Yes. The way that I can say, I love God, I love God, I love God. Yeah, I'm keeping his word. That's no love. That's from lips. Lips service. Thank you, Jesus. The love is yeah. your way. <laughs> you got reward obedience. That's why you keep following him. You keep pursuing him. Because rebellious people don't follow him. They want their own way. They will transgress what? It's hard. It's hard. Thank you, Jesus. And they are children by what? Cool messengers. See? So anytime you love him, you keep his commandment. When you keep his commandment, you got your own will, your own plan, your own ways, your own purposes are the You surrender to him. On a continual what? Basis. No one say what? Continual what? Basis. And that you, that's how you stay free in the spirit. You don't care of all kind of those kind of things going out there. You are free to enjoy your love, love relationship. Yes. See, you are fulfilled, you are intimate with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Satisfied. I can't be happy. I can't be happy in all those things. I'm happy because of, I'm in his will. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm happy because I'm walking his ways. I'm happy because I'm moving his time in hallelujah. The joy of the Lord's what? Yes. My yes. Yes. In his presence, the Lord's what? Fullness of joy. How did I get into his presence? By dying Thank to my Jesus. own will. My own way. My own time. And heal it and pursue him hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse, um, John 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Okay. Verse 20. John 14, verse 20. At that day ye shall know that I am in the, my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Okay. 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Manifest? What does manifest mean? Show. 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 Demonstrate. Bring to light. <laughs> See? Because you are keeping his word, he will manifest himself to you. You are pursuing him. You are pursuing his ways. Pursuing his ways. Pursuing his time. He will manifest. See? When he manifests, you are content. You are blessed. You enjoy him. He enjoys you. See? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Manifest his glory. Say his glory. His glory. His glory. Amen? Not his shame. But the following instruction. Amen. His glory. Manifest his glory. In health, in holiness, in blessing, everything. Unlimited. Ah, they blew it. No more cold sweat. Amen? Amen. No more tossing. No more kick. <laughs> when you in the manifesto process, everything is good. Yes, yes. That's heaven on, heaven on earth. Amen. Heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. No more 
peace, no more struggle, no more uh, oh, stress and oh, ten, ten more and all kind of Amen. God is no there's no confusion in the Lord. He said you going through confusion, you know the enemy's bombarding you with the wrong you know it's yes, 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 the enemy yes, to get you off to bring yes. us. He that, verse 21, he that keepeth my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be in love of my father, and I will love him, see, love back, and will manifest. Manifest. Amen. Manifest. 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 It's a Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Keep manifesting. Keep manifesting. Yourself to me. Yourself to me. Help me not be hard headed. Help me not to be hard headed. Help me to be soft hearted. Help me to be soft hearted. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to be tender. Help me to be tender. Receptive. 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 To you. To you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me. To know you intimately. To know you intimately. Not to chase any man's program. Not to chase any man's program. Or formula. Or formula. Or opinion. Or opinion. Or own their, their own ideas. Their own ideas. But to follow you, Holy Spirit. But to follow you, Holy Spirit. Continue to manifest. Continue to manifest. Your glory. Your glory. Your fullness. Your fullness. Upon me and my life. Upon me and my life. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. Okay, let's see verse 22. Somebody says, uh, John 14, verse 22. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? It's a good question. How will you manifest? Okay. <laughs> and they explain here how, how, how you manifest. Oh, you are not need to do on a continual basis. 23. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Yeah, keep my words. Keep my words. What's another word? Keeping his word. Loving him. You keep his word, you love him. If you don't keep his word, there's no love. Okay. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. See, make our abode with dwelling. Say dwelling. Dwelling. See, you keep him place and you don't become comfortable and make his dwelling place in you. Because you know you don't, you are not going to break the two down to the head to obey. You tell you one thing, obey. And it does spirit will tell you something. One time you, are, you do obey means there's pride in your heart. See? You, you, you can follow him. And that's what when you pray of that hallelujah, praise the living God. But it doesn't have time. We tell you five, ten thousand times hallelujah of the same thing. That's how you check yourself and see whether you're being or not, whether you're money, or you're pursuing him. You have to tell you four or five, oh you are in bed. You have to pray. Oh right, Lord. Get out to pray, oh Lord. Get out to pray, oh Lord. Get out to pray seven times before you get up. Uh-uh, something's wrong here. And most people don't do that. They don't check themselves. But they have to tell you seven times, you love him, he's your friend. But I have to tell you seven times, you get out to pray. After seven, seven times, the same issue. See, there's something's wrong in your heart. And so many Christians, they always blame shit, you know. See, that's a signal. I'm writing what? On the wall. That's a sprite is in the heart. This will be the rebellious in your heart and we are praise the living God that can keep you from following him and receiving his very best. It's just like in the uh, what happens when people um, they it says if the man love me he will keep my words. So if you love God you'll keep his words. So what happens people fall in and out of love with the Lord. Today they obey the word mm -hmm. and they love Jesus. Tomorrow they don't obey the word, that means you don't love him. You see, if it there's a thing you used to play with your kids, you yes. take a daisy, you say, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not. It's like, you know, going around that cycle on a daily basis, if you today you obey one thing, and then because you don't really want to yield in that area, you decide not to obey the word in that area of your life. Like, I mean, a classic example is when the word says that we are to pay our tithes and offerings. The tithes belong to the Lord, 10%. And, yes. and then an offering, which just opens up the windows of heaven. Yes. So when people don't yield in that area, so they're disobeying the word. So they really don't love God with their finances like he, he asked them to. Because he tried to get more to them when they obey, obey that word. Yes. He wants to give you more, but he just wants to prove your obedience in that area. See, see, if you really love him with your whole heart, with all your substance, you're going to be able to give to the Lord. Amen. So that's just one, that's just one example of today you love me, today you don't. 
you love me now, now you love me now you don't. So trying to train people to be steadfast in their love relationship with the Lord so that a manifest of presence can uh, happen in your life every day, every moment. You can, as you keep pursuing him, that means you keep loving him, keep yielding to him, going his way and, and dying to your own way. That's like, that's the crux of the message today is yielding to him moment by moment on a daily basis so his manifest presence can manifest, he can continue to manifest his love to us on a, on a daily basis, but he wants to do because we love him, he loves us, he wants to uh, give us his presence so that you feel blanketed, like you're comforted with his presence on you. Amen. Amen. That's so true, hallelujah. Amen. You love me once, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. And verse 24, same chapter. John 14, 24. If he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hears not mine, but the fathers which sent me. You see that? See, he that loveth me not keepeth not my saying. Not for three. I will be in speaking and doing things that I love for him. Show that we are pursuing him. Because he is leading. Well, we are just following. Say yes, follow. Following. Ah, follow me to pursue. Amen. You follow somebody, you pursue him, and we are praise and everything, but we know he has a good thing for us. Okay. See, but if you don't go his way, you want everything your way, your own will, then you forfeit the promises, the blessing he has for you that moment, yes. that day, that week, that year. <laughs> okay, kaka. And the thing goes what? Down the down the hill. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This thing I have spoken to you, be here present with you. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father said in my name, he shall teach you what? Oh, so we are following him. We are being taught all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Teach you all things. Hallelujah. And whatsoever I have said unto you. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So he even reminds you of what his word says, that you can walk in it. Um, there's not very many people that keep reminding you. Like in your spirit, you hear the word, which is it's like, here's the, here's the way you should go walk in it. When you hear that word, that's the way you should go. So we can choose to go our own way or go the way the word says. When, and he brings it back to your remembrance when you need it. The, so the more you study the word, read the word, as the Holy Spirit leads you, he has uh, certain things that he wants to keep teaching on a daily basis about his word so that when you need that word, then that he brings it back to your mind. It's like when um, my husband and I are teaching the words that we teach because it's taught by revelation knowledge, it's under the anointing that, and people sit under the teaching, you'll go home and you'll say, oh, I remember when they said that, and then the Holy Spirit will start bringing that teaching back to your remembrance, so you can walk in it, because it wasn't spoken by self, it was spoken under the anointing so he'll bring back the teaching to you um, he'll, it's like he almost hounds you sometimes with what we spoke, um because it was birthed of him. It wasn't just our own self, our own making that we chose to say that that day. It was led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So to, to, to follow. To follow. follow. Means to chase. Means to chase. To run after. To run after. Who? The Holy Spirit. Jesus. Amen. 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 For he is, who you are by in his kingdom, is easy to follow him. We are buying the king of self. He's not there. He doesn't operate the king of self. He operates the king of God. Whether it's righteousness, joy, and peace. What does righteousness mean? Rise standing on the word of God. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. Start from verse 5. Okay, before we read verse 5, let's read verse 3. What we just shared a few minutes ago. Okay. John 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. See that? You are cleansed what? Through, through the, the word. word. We are spoken unto you. By what? By revelation knowledge. Word spoken by sense knowledge doesn't cleanse us. That's presumptuousness. <laughs> well, that's why you feel, uh, you see other thing before you like, you feel defied. There's a woman who many says some time ago, and uh, after she spoke out of love, we want to cleanse ourselves. We feel unclean. It's true. Thank you, Jesus. Because Jesus. <laughs> if it's sense knowledge teaching, then they're teaching uh, under the spirit of this world. Yeah. So you're getting 
defiled by the spirit of this world. That Jesus comes to destroy the spirit of this world. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, that's the spirit of this world. So the word of God, Jesus' word, when he speaks it, cleanses you from the spirit of this world. And you receive his spirit. So that's why, that's the more meaning to this. It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. His word cleanses you from the spirit of this world. Amen. Amen. It cleanses from the condemnation. How does it cleanse us? He cleansed us by hearing and obeying. So you shall know the truth and the truth what? Set you free. Free from what? And cleanliness. Yes. <laughs> but if you don't obey the word, then thank you. Because we know we went home and cleansed ourselves and then take control of those spirits and then we left. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. Verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in it. Say abide in it. Abide. So we abide in his manifested presence. We are following him. It's easy to follow him when you're in the spirit. Amen. Only say Galatians chapter 5. If you live in the spirit, let us all walk. Walk, walk in the spirit. spirit. To walk me, to pursue, yeah. to follow. Amen. But you have to be in the spirit first. You know what? To yes. walk in the spirit. Okay. <laughs> if you are in the flesh, you cannot walk in the spirit. You have to switch to repentance. Back to the spirit realm, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You live in the spirit, then what? You walk, walk in the in spirit. spirit. Or you run after the spirit. Or you are led by the spirit. Or you, are, you chase the spirit. Or you pursue the spirit. And the spirit continues to draw you. You are going to run after you. With your whole heart, your, your spirit, your soul, your body. With your spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, shut up, Baka. You know God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Verse 5. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. See that? Without him you can do nothing. And who can say, without me you can do nothing? What does that mean? You know, can't do anything which he wants you to do. You can do something for self want to do. Oh yes, it's all there. I cannot do anything that he has chosen you to do because you're not connected with him. Right. You're running your own race. <laughs> okay. You have to stay connected. Thank right? you, Jesus. You have to stay connected through obedience. No obedience, you're not connected with him. Amen. Okay. See, without me, you can do nothing. I'm here in Psalm 127, unless the Lord build a house, the labor in vain, what? Build it. Vain, vain, vain. You're building something. That's not God. No anointing. Thank you, Jesus. If you build in the flesh, then you're just gratifying the flesh, building up the flesh so that the flesh is stronger than the spirit. So then you can't obey God when the flesh is stronger than the spirit. You have to get to the point where your spirit is stronger than your flesh so that you, it's easy to yield. Because a person that's full of the spirit is easily led. It says, my sheep know my voice, and they, uh, they will not follow another, you know, spirit. They'll follow. So the more you follow the Spirit and stay full of the Spirit, it's easy to be led and it's easy to obey. Then when you find it difficult that you're difficult to obey, then you know you've leaped the anointing and you're more in the flesh. And you have to get out of the flesh and get back into the Spirit by um, praying for yourself, repenting, and getting built back up in the Spirit so that you know it's easy to be led by the Spirit. It's easy to obey them. Because when you find it, if you start seeing yourself getting stubborn or let's say a good example is a husband and wife relationship, if the wife finds it more difficult to, you know, follow what her husband's asking her to do, then that wife should know that that's a signal that she's getting the flesh and she's not, and she's starting getting into pride, that she doesn't, if, if he gives her an ask her to do something and then she doesn't want to do it, which he was led by the Holy Spirit, led by the Lord to tell her to do that, mm -hmm. then you should know that she's getting into pride, stubbornness, rebelliousness. So not only prideful against him, her husband, but also it's against the Lord because the Lord gave him the authority to say that. So you're not only against your husband, you're against what the Lord's telling you to do too. And That's so way. true. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So that's just that's just one example uh, in, in a husband and wife relationship. How 
You're not being led. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God's confirmed the word. Yes, she's yes. true. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So God wants yes. the home to be a happy home. That's right. That's yes. not automatic. You can marry the right person. They are getting both of them in pride. The Bible says, Oh, destroy the house of our and the proud. proud. And proud will always go up. They always go punished. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank That's you. it. Well, verse 7. What do I do? Chapter John 15, verse, verse 7. Is that what it says? Verse 6. Six. Okay. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. See, they lose the reward. They're not abiding in him. All the promise God gave to them when they were about it here is gone out of the window. In fact, this is very old man. Yeah. That's what happened to the children of Israel. They went to, they came to the promise now, all right. God said, don't do this, don't marry the foreign woman, don't touch, don't serve false God, and all that. They went and did the opposite. What happened? They were protected from the land. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, God, in his mercy, is restoring them back. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That's the secret of other prayer. Hello. This verse right here is in getting your prayers answered. <laughs> abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So, ah, go ahead. so abiding in him is this walking in the spirit, and my words abide in you, following his word walking in his word and ye shall ask what you will that, because that means that you're walking uprightly you're a righteous person you're in right standing with God and whatever you ask him to do he will do it Amen. praise God thank you Lord. thank you Lord so that's that's why it's so important to stay um, that's why the scripture says the prayers of the righteous avail of much that means that a righteous man in right standing with God he can take a whole city for the Lord because his prayers will, his, that just that one person praying mm -hmm. can do much for the Lord because they're in right standing with God to destroy Satan's kingdom. And then two people, so that's why husband and wife in right relation, in right standing with the Lord, two people, if one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. So two people in agreement, in right standing with the Lord, their prayers avail much. And that's why the Holy Spirit, my husband and I, we pray for people and pray for things. That's why you see manis, manifest yes. it, it, yes. instant results. Because yes. you stay in love with one another, in right relationship with one another, in right relation with God. Yes. So yes. you see that we're keeping God first, each other next. We're in right relationships on this, um, you, Jesus. That, that, like the triangle, the perfect, you know, so you're in a full agreement with what God with God's word, with each other, and the, your prayers are answered, and not hindered. Now sometimes, like just like Daniel, he prayed for 21 days, and the enemy came in to oppose him in the Old Testament. It wasn't that he wasn't in right standing, it just the enemy was opposing him, and so his prayers, the answer was delayed because of that. But even if you're facing opposition, and you keep standing on that word, and you keep praying, God is gonna, you're gonna get the breakthrough. As long as you don't, you know, fall short along the way, mm -hmm. just keep praying. Because some things don't, aren't answered right away. Because God might be trying to teach you something, you, or if you're facing opposition, you, you know, it's like uh, in the, in Revelations, it talks about your prayers were like, uh, or like water, like filling up a vial. You know, that, that once it was full, then it was answered. That's what that Revelation, I have read that in a long time, but... It's just like, so that prayers, that you keep praying, you pe keep pursuing him, and it, it will come to pass, Amen. as long as you don't give up. Thank you, Jesus. So you, I always think about it this way, is that I'm not going to let the enemy win. Amen. I am not going to let the enemy win. Amen. That's why I'm determined to receive all that God has for me, because I'm not going to let him win. Amen. Jesus. If you keep that mindset, Thank you, then you can, you know, stay like, yes, you are a soldier for the Lord, you're going to fight your good fight of faith, and lay hold on eternal life. Because you're not going to let the enemy win. Thank you, Amen. Amen. That's so true. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 15, verse 7 again. Thank you, Jesus. If, conditional tense. Say if. If. In the second condition. That if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will. It shall be what? Yes. 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 Okay. 
And she said, how do we abide in him that follow his instructions? That you obey him. Amen. If you abide in him, and my words abide in you, may you make the word of God part and parcel of your life. You are doing the word. That's what you abide in this. By yes. doing. Not just by hearing, by doing. Yes. By following his instruction. By being a doer. That's the word abide in this. Then you shall ask. Because the word of, of God already abide in you. The word you are asking is already in line with the word of God. And that is, you are not asking it in selfishness or coveting anything, hallelujah, or self will. Because the word of God is in your heart. Then you pray according to the word of God. God is giving to your heart. Because you are already doing the word of God. Then, what happened? The servant says, and it shall be done unto you. Yes. It shall be done to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, be done. As you are continuing obedient to be done. The same thing is repeated in 1 John chapter 3. And also, that's why he says, it's no good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's, that's confirms this word. In the old, that's the Old Testament. It's a, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's Psalm 84. So Psalm 84 is confirmed right here in uh, John 15, 7. In the first epistle of John chapter 3. We're going to start... First John chapter 3. Verse 21. Verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. The confidence. confidence. See, you know to pursue how to have confidence in Him. No confidence in yourself. That's right. At that we are so confident in Christ, we say, oh, he's arrogant. How can he say that? He's proud and da da da. People can judge you by their own opinion. Confidence means you trust him, what he said. You think about his word. Amen. And that's what you are now our responsibility. If you are not confident, you cannot believe. You can say, but no, we really say that. Yeah, that's what he said. God says what he means. Amen. You have to be confident in, your, in him you. so that you can affect your self identity, you. self worth. Hello? You. So many Christians are not confident in the word. The God said, oh, I hope, I hope so. You are not confident, you hope, so. you hope so, instead of saying, yes, I believe. That's right. Amen. You still, still hoping? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> See? Beloved, if I have confidence now, then we have confidence now toward God. God we are pursuing is manifest. We have confidence that what he said is able to do it, hallelujah. We will see another way, this confidence again. We're going to, it's, it's very important we understand that, hallelujah. So you don't, if you're not confident, anybody can talk you out of it. That's right. Oh, yes. You don't believe, you don't trust. So, verse 32. 1 John 3, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive in him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. See, but we are confident to us, and whatsoever we ask, we receive him of him because what? We keep his commandments and do those things what? That are pleasing in his sight. Hallelujah. So, this backs up what Jesus said. Amen. What John is saying here is backs up exactly what Jesus said. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Verse 12. Verse 12. He that hath the Son has life. Hello. He, he has what? Has the Son. Has what? Has life. life. Listen, death? No. no. Say life. Life. Life what? More life. abundantly. Life for you to enjoy him. Amen. Holy Spirit, the spirit of life. You, you believe the way you receive the word, it's life. The word of God is the word of life. Amen. Verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God has not life. See? Yeah, Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay. Verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. See, you see it again. In prayer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. This is the confidence that we have in him. Yes. Not in ourselves. In him. Yes. And verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. See? That means petition is another word for prayer. Amen. That the prayers, things that you're asking the Lord for, 
will be answered. And verse 20. Verse 20 in that same chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is given us what? Understanding. understanding you come to understand his understanding. Amen. See? What's the first one? That we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Amen. Jesus. Back to John 15. The Gospel John chapter, chapter 15. 15. Thank you. See, we are going back and forth. As well to say, our different, different writers led by the Holy Spirit say the same thing. We understand hallelujah. God command you and I to pursue him. If you don't pursue him, if you don't pursue him, you cannot serve him cheerfully, gladly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything we do, we have to do with passion. Say passion. Passion. See, when you're serving, you are, uh, hey, there should be passion. Not dragging your feet and passion. all kinds of things. Yes. Man. Amen. Excited about serving the king and yes. the Lord. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. See, passion for him. Passion. Hallelujah. And know those who are passionate for him, Thank those who are, who are not doing their own will. Thank those you, who are doing his will, you give him his passion. You are doing your own will, you don't have your own will done, then you lose your passion for him. If you are doing his will, you are passionate, you are excited, hallelujah, praise the name, hallelujah. You serve the Lord cheerfully and gladly, hallelujah, you are willing to be there, you eat the best of the land, hallelujah, praise it. You can't wait for coming next, hallelujah, but you are always chasing him, chasing him, chasing him. No stop, hallelujah, you chase him, stop will overtake you. We're full of yes. stuff, and you don't know where to put them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank okay. You, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. John 15. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8. John, St. John, Gospel John 15, verse 8. Here it is, my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. See that? Verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Say, continue you are. In my life. He started to continue chasing him. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Continue. No, no, no cool off anywhere. Uh oh, no time to cool off. Amen. All the time you white hot. Okay. Thank you. Continue. Then continue. Don't stop. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Don't be worried what you were doing. Continue chasing him. Continue pleasing him. Continue loving the Lord. Continue serving cheerfully gladly. If you don't do that, you serve your enemies. Hello. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. So everything that he promised you will come to pass. Because yes. if you have confidence in him, you're trusting him, and you're doing his will, and operating his commandments, that means you're loving him, keeping him first, then he, there's nothing that he won't do for you. There's things, things that he's promised you will come to pass. Because you have confidence in him that what he said it will, will happen. Yes, yes. Amen. Verse 9. John 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye my love. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See, you see how people, so many people are not enjoying the love of God. They're not keeping his commandments. Thank you, Jesus. See, if conditional. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You are God's beloved. You are so secure, hallelujah. Praise the living God. You are so blessed. You are so ministered to. You know, God love you. God care. Anybody want to to criticize you and say all kinds of those things? It won't affect you. You know you are loved. Because you can keep his commandment. You are his beloved. You are special. You are comfortable. You are secure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I say, if conditional. If. The Bible is full of if, if, if you do this, this will happen. If you don't do this, it's a choice. It's a special of choice. If you keep my commandments, then what? He shall abide in my love, abide in my manifested presence. He shall rest on every side. Everything I promise you fulfill, hallelujah, praise the living God. For you are getting first thing first. You are loving, fellowshipping the Holy Spirit. Following Him, hallelujah. You are not resisting, you are not provoking, you are not tempting Him, hallelujah, praise the living God. See, if you keep if you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love. Even as I keep my father's commandment and abide in his love. Jesus did the same thing. That's right. Yes. See, that is He's not telling us anything to do that he didn't, he didn't do it himself. <laughs> and it worked for him. That means if it worked for him, it'll work for us. Amen. 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 Amen.
Verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Who is qualified to receive joy? Those are yes. keeping his commandments. Yes. See? You cannot keep his commandments and get depressed, impressed, oppressed, being bound. No. Because you keep his commandments, he liberates you, shall know the truth, or keep his commandments, the commandment will keep set you free. Verse 12, it says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. 13, greater love had no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. When he says, this is my commandment, you love one another, if you just walk in that, you will fulfill all the commandments. Amen. Because love, so love covers a multitude of sin, so this is my commandment that you love one another. So when you love people, you're not gonna kill, your, you're not gonna kill, you're not gonna steal, you're not gonna try to destroy anybody because you love. And out of jealousy, you're not gonna covet other people's things because you love God. You know that he's going to provide you with everything that you need. Right. Right. As he says, right. seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his, all these other things shall be added. Right. So when you love him, you're not going to covet. Right. When you love, you know, it's, it's all, it all boils down to love. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the right kind of love. We're talking about agape love. God's unconditional love towards us is in loving him and following his word. So that we just operate in that and everything else falls into place. Thank you, Jesus. All the other the, the Ten Commandments and every a commandment is everything that God asks you to do. Is keep my commandments and love one another as I have loved you. Thank Verse 13. Jesus. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Okay. Laying down your life is not laying down your life for someone's self-will. It's a difference. Someone can be well, so selfish and wanting to want to and he called it lady to, to do anything. He said, Oh, you reject, oh you hate me, blah, blah, blah. don't listen to that. That means have to be spirit led. That's right. Love is the spirit of God. Say spirit of God. Spirit of God. Has to be spirit led. Amen. Amen. There were many years ago there was a guy who came to borrow money. Yes. Uh, this guy asked for hundred dollars. And Holy Ghost said, told me, give it to him, but he's not going to pay you back. Gave the money to, to this guy. So today is about 20 something years now. We don't even know where he is. See, I laid down my life. Even though I need that money. Yes. See, Holy Spirit spoke to me. That's what it means to lay down your life. Because your life is something, hallelujah, praise the living God. We end that money, hallelujah, pray, and we give it to a friend and never kept it, kept it way. And he told me, Holy Ghost told me, he's not going to pay you back. See, he warned me, thank you, Lord Jesus, and that's better to happen. Over 20 something years now, that hundred dollars has been worth. Praise the Lord. I don't begrudge or see that's one of the examples because when God tells you to do something, amen, amen. If you don't get the reward as you're supposed to, God use other methods to bless you. That's right. See, I laid down my life, I gave him even after I have I have, I have thousands of things to use for that hundred dollars. Thank you, Jesus. I gave it to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's how it means in this scripture. You see, you have to be spirit-led, not that anybody just come to, oh, I want to give you, or trying to, like someone called you, the, oh, I want to give you money, blah, 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 all those things. Ah, God is there to give, you can give. You have to be spirit-led. Led by what? Spirit-led. Spirit not by someone's emotion, and trying to play, and play your emotion, all kind of things, trying to, oh, you say, you say, well, they say, if you don't give to so you are not loving, you try to accuse you. That's the not, devil. You're not a Christian. Yeah. You don't give what, it's not, because uh, if you're not playing into their own their yeah. own self-will. God never told them to ask you, and they're asking you out of self. So then if you if you give to them, then you're disobedient because God never told you to do it. So they're they're getting you out of love. It's 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 you're actually out of love if you do what they want you to do when it's not led by the Spirit. See, you don't want anybody to get you out of love. And then they'll come and say that you're not loving. <laughs> see, that's, that's, so that's the two sides of the coin. But see, God know in God's kingdom, that's if you're not being led by the Spirit, then, then you're not walking in love. See, so then if that, somebody tries to get you to do something that's like my husband said, not this in self, then they try to get you out of love. So we have to walk in love it means being, being always led by the Holy Spirit. That's it. And if, Jesus. if you miss it, and you just repent and ask God to forgive you for missing it, you know, but, you know, we try to be right on every time by being able to discern 
when people ask you to do things, and you know, is this being this is by the spirit or is this flesh? They're asking me this, or should I, you know, say, Lord, do you want me to do this? What they're asking me. I know. You should have so many experiences when we're driving on the road here. You see people who stay on the corner asking for money. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes Holy Ghost says, don't give them anything. At times we say, give them. So mm -hmm. Everything, every day, you depend on your spirit left. Yeah, Stop. sometimes they'll say that they're, they're using that for drugs. Yeah. They're just selling this candy and other things on the corner yeah. for to get drug money. See. So you don't give to them. Or see. that it's a uh, it's a, a, a there's I don't know there's one church that asks for it's this church is not born of me they're just mm -hmm. asking they're not being led by God to you know ask people for the, for money he said when you take God as your source you don't have to have fundraisers you don't have to have fried chicken <laughs> you don't have to cook it, do all these things you know if there's only a few people that if God's your source then He will supply your needs right. so you don't have to be anxious about finances. Amen. He, if he told, and see, because if you're walking in the spirit and he led you to do that or to, to purchase something, then he's going he's gonna to pay for it. Amen. He'll supply your money to pay for that Amen. thing. If you're led by the spirit to buy it, Amen. then he will give you the money to pay for it. Amen. And that's how people get into debt because they're not led by the spirit Amen. when they purchase things. So they're trying to pay for it on their own. Amen. They're just, God's not helping. They don't have the help. To pay for it, and that's why, you know, you could repent, and the Lord will help you pay for it. But, you know, it's best to be led by the Spirit in everything we do. That's why we're. That, that's the best way. Love is the best way. It's always, and it comes down to walking in the Spirit is walking in love. Yeah. Pursuing Him. Pursuing what? His presence. Presence. His manifested presence. Okay, the text is a greater law has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. For the year, my friend, if you do whatever I command you. So how you become his friend? For a good year. Amen. See? All the friends we have in Jesus. Everybody sing that song. Yes. Yeah, they don't obey the word. They sing that song. Oh, the friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Oh, no, no. He's a friend. Why are you not obeying him? Yes. See? Or oh, he tells you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 15. John 15, verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. How does he do this to us? Everything he from his Father made known to us. He does it through the Holy Spirit. Because John 16 confirmed that in 13 hours. He said, You shall receive of mine and show it to you. Let's read it. John 16. John chapter 16. Verse 3. See, verse 13. Oh, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. You see that? You said John 15, verse 15. I explained this. Hallelujah. Praise him. He shall receive of mine. Jesus is saying that. All this we will receive of him and show it to us when we obey and escape his word. Keep him with this. Verse 15, John 16, verse 15. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. See? That's how he does. Show it to you. That's how we become his friends. Amen. See? Seven, servants are not intimate. Friends. Friends, there's a deep intimate relationship between you and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, John 15, 15 again, hallelujah, to know that it's not everybody is uh, Christ's friend. Only those who are what? Obeying his commandment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. You can call you call yourself that you are his friend, but he doesn't know you as, your, as, as his friend. <laughs> okay, God, 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 God. Thank you, Jesus. John 15, 15. John 15, verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. See, servant doesn't know what the Lord does. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. What has he made known to us? For he knows we will be obedient. Say we will be obedient. Verse 16. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that one servant ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Here again, prayer answer. Prayer answer, Father, in me. 
We do it well. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's come to uh, Deuteronomy 48, Deuteronomy 28, verses 47, 48. So we pursue him with a willing heart. Amen. With a cheerful heart, a willing attitude. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy 28. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 47. You told me that's a fake book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Mm -hmm. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Verse 48, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. See that? When we pursue him, we pursue her. If a willing heart and willing mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come, we give it. First Samuel chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 2. Verse uh, 35. Verse 35. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. You hear that? And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. Who's um, mine anointed? That means Jesus. He says, he shall walk before mine anointed forever. You walk with Jesus forever. If, you, um, if you're faithful to what God has called you to do and obey his commandments. See, uh, raise me up a faithful priest. You have to be faithful to pursue him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. What we shall do according to what that watches in my heart. So God has a heart. Amen? Amen. And in my mind. And I'll build him a sure house. They shall walk before my daughter. What? Forever and ever. Amen. When God demotes Saul from being king, what the Lord says. Second, first summit of the 13. First Samuel 13, 13. Verse 13, yeah. First Samuel 13, 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God. Do you hear that? He had it. Like he wants to be his own to <laughs> Which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Verse 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. You see that? That's that everything God is conditional. That's good to confirm it. <laughs> It is conditional as long as Saul was obedient. So everything God tell him to do, it was raining. And when he started disobedient, no. That's how he died. The very people were supposed to destroy, destroy him. Everything Christ in the, the book is conditional. Yeah. If anybody explains that to you, you know you, you understand that hey, you can act ugly, you can act mean, you can't go to because otherwise soon you reap. You reap. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything is conditional. Say conditional. Condition. That's a scripture again. Hallelujah. And this is the only one. There's so many in the book. If you do this, that's the case. If you do this, if you do this, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Read that verse again. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. You see that? Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, kill or not, continue. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the same thing is, is repeated, hallelujah, with Eli. When Eli refused to correct his children. First Samuel chapter 2. Verse 30. Conditional. They're all conditional here. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. You see that? Again, conditional. See, I want to 
<laughs> but if you don't do it, no more. Then that's because you're like, God lied. No, then you don't do your part. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Another example I'll give you, Numbers chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we give it praise. Thank you, Jesus. Numbers chapter 14. Verse 28. Verse 28. Say it to them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. See that? As you have spoken in my ear, all they speak in his ears. When man and complaining. See, obviously they spoke. He said, You get it. Power of life and death of what? <laughs> see, it's in Amos, it's in Proverbs, and it's all over the Bible. Yes. Right. <laughs> Keep going, please. Verse 29. Your carcasses shall fall in the will of this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Verse 30. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to you to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Je Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which he said should be a prey, then will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. See, they know the land what? They despise. Amen. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Verse 33, and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities. Say iniquity. Iniquity. It's willful out of disobedience. You bear us that's iniquity. Okay? Even yeah. forty oh, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. No more what? Breach of promise. You know what that means? Means I'm going to interrupt the promise I'm giving to you because you're not doing your part. It's called kind of breach. Interruption. Interruption. Hello? That's God saying this. Thank you, Jesus. So why have we, have we tell you everything in, in, in Christ is conditional? Oh, yes. yes. Amen. Oh, it's not how you begin, it's how you finish. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. And this yes. I'm not being told many places. They say, oh, God, I can prophesy, oh, yeah, everything's going to come. Oh, I can live anyhow. That's how we think. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shanoa, bridge interruption. Promise. Yes. Amen. Thank you. We saw those who had an interruption of the promised children of Israel, King Saul and Eli. We saw all of them there. Okay? In Jeremiah chapter 18, I also seen the same thing. Hallelujah. In different way. God is good. Hallelujah. Shut up, buddy. Jeremiah 18. Verse 1. Jeremiah 18. That is why the secret is daily examine yourself. Lord, you've spoken this promise to me. Is there anything I'm doing which is displeasing your sight? Show me. And how about yourself? Amen. So you don't get interruption or breach of promise. <laughs> That's right. Let's still be suspended. In the, Jeremiah also said the same thing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, so when you daily examine yourself, you're not bitter towards anyone, you're not blame shifting, then you're in a position, hallelujah, pray to receive everything God has for you. Even much, much more. Because God shared this with us progressively. He doesn't tell us everything. That's right. Something he doesn't tell you because you're not ready to handle it. It's all good. Because you're not obeying the small thing he told you, I can give you other bigger things. <laughs> Hello? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Jeremiah what? 18, 18. Verse 7. Okay. At one instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Verse 8, if that nation against whom I have pronounced to turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. See, that's it. Another side of the coin, keep up, please. Verse 9, and at what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plan it. Verse 10, even if it do evil in my sight, then obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. You see that? It's plain here, you don't have to get uh, Hebrew to get interpreting of this. It's plain English. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He said, and this is uh, all, all support the principle of God. Down. That's what happened to Saul. That's what God saw. He didn't do well. He was removed. Eli died. Um, disobedience. Through disobedience. And uh, King Uzzah, 2 Corinthians 26, he started well. Boom. He turned to a leper. 
And all along, Manasseh was changed as he repented and God restored his kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar, the same thing, hallelujah, praise the living God. Again, to pride, seven years chewing grass, and to praise the Lord, and to God's mercy, restore him back. <laughs> okay. All this is the Bible for you and I to learn from the weakness, for the failures of others, so we don't go their way. That's what we're right. putting here. That's right. Amen. To warn us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You know, all under the New Testament, that, that, yeah. Look at Ananias and Have you ever had second chance? No. At chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Alexander, Alexander the copper smith, who hindered Paul in his ministry, was a goner. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know, no, no, no. Hallelujah. Korah who opposed uh, Moses were well, open, eaten by the worm. Nathan, Abiru, and all and all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we see God through all this in the Bible. We don't go the way others went. Don't go the way of failure of others. Hallelujah. Let go of your own way. Pursue the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. But die your own way. Hallelujah. And pursue so that anything he has promised you, you expect it. Say expect it. Expect if you're not expecting, if, if, you're, if you're doing contract to his will, you don't expect it. See? Okay? So we see it is right here. Jeremiah chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 25. Jeremiah 5, verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. See that? You can have what? Turn away these things. Yes. And your sins have withholding good things from you. Withholding good things. The Lord. We saw so many people. Okay, okay, okay. That's why nobody can repent for you. You have to repent for yourself. That's right. And Jeremiah chapter 7. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 3. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. You see that? Amend your way. The way amend you change, repent, for yes. sick. And of course, you have to plan the man. Things will be stopped. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 20, same chapter, verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah 7, verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, now be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that ye may be well unto you, that it may be well unto you. 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their own evil hearts, and went backwards and not forward. Well, what? Backwards. Yes. When you went back for what you lose the blessing. That's it. <laughs> Unless you repent, then you are. You'll start all over again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. God is good, hallelujah. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Everything goes conditional. Everything God. Everything God is conditional. It's conditional. Even your salvation. Christ died for every one of us. Yes. But not everybody got saved. Those who don't meet the requirement to be saved, they'll be saved. There's provision made for everybody to be saved. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love 59. 5 9, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot say, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Jesus. Verse 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. You see that? Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's come to you. We need to pursue for how they do it. Um, Exodus. 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 Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 and 22. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. 
And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them in the ways, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. Verse 22, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the cloud by fire, excuse me, by night from before the people. Say the pillar of cloud. That's a manifest of presence. See? You see, say the same thing. I could see pillar of cloud, people's face stand before you. <laughs> see? But he'll be instructing you. It's how much you follow his instruction. That man will become thick and say thicken. Thicken. Become tangible. Tangible. But if you agree, you vex him, he what? He's dead, but he'll pull back. Say pull back. Pull back. Pull back. Put your hand. Let's see. Scripture to confirm that. Hosea chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you pull back, you're your own. Thank you, Jesus. Hosea chapter 5. Hosea. Okay, kick 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 Son of man, if you need, if you need, if you need, if you need. You have to follow the presence of the Lord for our life. If you don't, <laughs> let me say, take note of what? Your oh, Holy you Spirit from me. me. You knew who the Holy Spirit is out of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, kind of back, kind of back, kind of back. Sick and kind of back. See, Jose is, is up and down, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hosea chapter 5. Amen. Hosea chapter 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Judah, fall also, excuse me, fall yeah. in their iniquity. Okay. Judah also shall fall with them. So pride goes me to fall. The quicker way to fall is to pray. Amen. Verse 6, and they shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord. But they shall not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. He has what? Withdrawn himself. himself. He has withdrawn himself. He has what? Withdrawn himself. himself. From them. From them. He has what? Withdrawn himself. May he withdraw his manifested presence. There are two types of presence. The presence of the Lord is also a manifested presence. Amen. He has withdrawn himself. Amen. Amen. Go back. Jesus. See? And the same thing is repeated here. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Same chapter, chapter 5. Verse 15. That's this. Hosea 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. You hear that? I will go. He will draw himself to what? They acknowledge. They are what? They are offended. They're because the Holy Spirit was offended. <laughs> yeah, that's a person. See? See them, please. And seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. Yeah? Go to the knowledge. But when we draw people, when he draw himself from you, you know something wrong. <laughs> you come from his brothers you used to feel. Hello? That's right. Well, he's offended. And you have to admit mistake. Yeah. Yeah. He restores. Yeah, restore. 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 See why David says, I will read Psalm 51. <coughs> you don't know this scripture. It's a common scripture. David was able to talk about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. How much more we are Amen. Amen. Holy Jesus. Spirit. Jesus. See, so, I know the offense means they repent. Amen. David says, Psalm 51. This one say, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Say transgression. Transgression. What transgression means? Transgression means rebelliousness. It's a one time act of rebellious is called transgression. People know what they're doing, but they still rebel. That's transgression. See? And it's verse 2 say, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Okay, that we said. Let's come to verse. So, verse 3 goes, it says, for he acknowledges. Okay, read. Verse 3, for I acknowledge my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. See, he acknowledged it, he didn't blame anybody. It means he repented. That's it. So, yeah. Keep on. And verse 7. So, Psalm 51, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse 8. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. 
Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. See that? Cast me not away from thy presence. The David loved the Holy Spirit. See? Mm -hmm. and that's when we fell into our daughter relationship. Something was wrong. He repented. See? And he says 12. 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Say free spirit. Free spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Not the name of the Holy Spirit. Free spirit. We are pursuing him. See? You give him liberty, freedom. No freedom to do your own thing. You don't to please him. And if you hold your back, you'll be broken. To mm -hmm. yield, short, peace. Thank you, Lord. So see the children of Israel, hallelujah. Let's come to Numbers chapter 40, as you are pursuing the presence of the Lord. You cannot pursue him unless you are willing to obey him. <laughs> if you don't obey him, obey uh, those who put God put over you, you cannot pursue. They lose his presence, and then he did. So many people in the Bible. Numbers 40, verse 34. Uh, excuse me. Exodus 40. Sorry. Exodus 40, verse uh, number 34. Exodus 40. Exodus 40, 34. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Verse 35, And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Verse 36, And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. You see how they are pursuing his manifest presence? For the glory of God? <laughs> You follow your glory God, you always decrease. You always increase in your life. Yes. See? You want to be you want to you want him to increase? You to increase. Press him along. The carry of his glory. Everywhere you go and you don't have to struggle and strive and just a flow. Just a free flow. We are pursuing him. See? But that is when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward on their journey. Children of Israel, oh. It's too late now, it's too early now, I want to sleep, I want to sleep in. Don't you sleep in, eating by, by wolves. <laughs> That's true, they are depend on the cloud. Yes. You don't say, oh, I'm too tired now to get up. And the cloud moved. They moved. They moved the cloud. Mm -hmm. They're not slow pole, they're not leaving behind. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See? And in the cloud, all their knees were met. Amen. No holiday in, in the wilderness. They were well fed. Their shoes did not wear out. See, there's always life. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anything you buy and use will life long because you are burning his presence. Amen. No worry out of anything. The same anointing of each other is in the cloud. Where other cars are broken down, they are being fixed up, yours always running. <laughs> Amen, or air conditioning breaking down or anything, yours Amen, always running. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus, thank because it's life. You are walking in continual willing obedience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you here? Yes. Amen. Amen. Shut up. Amen. See? Yes. And the cloud move. The cloud. They don't dispute the cloud. The cloud, why are you moving up? Mm. Mm. Just submit it. Not only submit to the cloud, they also submit to the what? The one who raised Moses up to be the head. See, there are no multiple head here. Anything of two or three heads is what is always ugly. It's the natural. You right. ever said dog with three right. heads? Right. And anything of no head is always ugly. Right. That's what we have in the church of Lodosia. Yeah. It's run by the people. Uh. Oh yes. Uh. You read the book of Revelation. Church run by the people, not run by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And there's so many out there. <laughs> okay. Or is it become possessed or God possessed? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Read verse 36 again. Exodus 40, verse 36. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. Verse 37. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed 
not till a day that it was taken up. See, no, no, hasty. No, say, oh, we are tired here for, we stay there for three minutes, six minutes, let's move on. Mm -hmm. The cloud did not move. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And they're all. Yes. They're wholly dependent on the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit is manifest at present. That's what God wants you and I to do today, too. The cloud is in you and I. The cloud is upon us. It's always tough. Amen. So, we are following the cloud, following the pursuing Him. We will change, your attitude will change. You're not going to be in and out. You stay at party in the name of 24 hours. No, no visit. So we need visit. Today they are the spirit tomorrow. Or oh, few minutes they are the spirit another they just flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. Amen. Yes. 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 For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys. Through what? All, all, all their journeys. journey. All the journey. All the journey. All. Oh, no yes. stop. Yes. See, see what is written in Numbers chapter. Come with me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Number chapter 9. I'm going to see verse 15. Why has God put this many, many times in the Bible? Because that is principle. It's also in, in, in the book of Nehemiah, the book of Psalms. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Numbers 9, verse 15. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. Verse 16, so it was... So what are these? Those are manifested present. Mm -hmm. Not only in the cloud, also like fire in the night. Yes. See, that's why when, when they went to the upper room, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, what? Fire. What do you call what? Fire. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And fire is, is given to the obedient. When fire comes and burns stuff out of you, you become pure. Let go. Mm -hmm. Don't kick the touch upon the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Verse right. Verse 16. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Mm -hmm. 17. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. See? Keep coming. Pursue the person That's right. You always yes. showed them the exact, the exact spot. Because the cloud would come back down in that spot so that they would stay there. So he chose the place that they would stay. Just like if people are living in the wrong city, they're out.